Welcome back to Down to the Wire. I'm your host, Brian Costa. And we have a great episode in store for you guys tonight. Uh, you know, we are live here from the Coffler Center on this Friday night, and we have a lot to discuss with you. Uh, we're going to be breaking down all the latest from the NBA uh, with the Celtics taking on the Milwaukee Bucks in the next round of the NBA playoffs, as well as breaking down all the latest from the 2022 NFL draft. Uh, Tyler, uh, you know, I know we I know we have a guest on the show, so you can, might need you to speak a little towards that microphone when we talk. But, you know, how are you doing tonight, man? Um, I'm doing pretty good. Um, it's been a long day. Finals are coming up and the term is ending. So it's turning into a crazy, crazy last couple of weeks, but I'm making it through. I um, was able to relax last night, watch the draft. And then, you know, you got the Celtics coming up, playing the Bucks on Sunday. So some good things coming up as well. So absolutely. So obviously we got a ton to discuss tonight and Tyler indubitably before we do, before we indubitably discuss these things tonight, uh, we have a special guest on the show and I want to welcome him in. He is actually a fellow Bryant university radio show host here at the Coffler center. Uh, his name is Christopher drink and he's, he is a co-host of the, of the dog talk uh, radio show. Uh, Chris, you know, welcome to the show, man. Uh, thank you. I'm, Glad to be on here, and I'm excited to talk some sports with you guys. Absolutely, man. So first things first, we're going to start off in the NBA, where you know we discussed it. Uh, I, I discussed this on my Wednesday show with uh, with a special guest at the time, uh, you know, with uh, Michael Callanan, uh, and you know, I ended up mentioning with him. You know, we talked about the Celtics. 4-0 sweep over the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, they got the brooms now nice and ready for them. So, sweep, sweep. yeah, it was a great time. It was obviously an amazing day. Uh, but now now we have our next opponent in the Milwaukee Bucks. So we're going to be facing them. Uh, we have we have kind of a slight advantage, though. Giannis Antetokounmpo uh, is going to be coming in here, but he's going to be missing one of his star star uh, teammates uh, in, Chris Middles, in Chris Middleton. He has a grade two MCL sprain and will miss the entirety of the series versus the versus the Celtics. It's a pretty huge blow for the for the Bucks. And I don't know. How, how do you feel about the Celtics as we move forward in the series? Um, that is a big blow for the Bucks because that is their their second best player and their second like leading score. Yes. But they still do have Drew Holiday and is it, it's Brooke Lopez. Yeah. Yes. They got Brooke Lopez. And then obviously they got Giannis. Um, but also one player that is probably going to step up and definitely will is Grayson Allen. Yes. Grayson Allen has been playing lights out. He almost shot, he shot like eight for nine from three, a couple games ago, something like that. Some, some almost near perfect. And Man's getting booed all over the place, which is really funny. But the Celtics need to play the same style that they've been playing all year and the same style that they played against the Nets mm -hmm. because that style was they literally double teamed Durant and Kyrie Irving every once in a while, and it played out for them. Yes. Now you you got Robert Williams back. Amazing. He's going to be shadowing Giannis. I can guarantee it. He's got the size to match him. But there's also, you got to be careful because Giannis has insane athleticism. So it, it's, it, he's going to be a tough man to stop. But I honestly think the Celtics can do it, especially this year. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, listen, they have a great team around them. Chris, how do you feel about this Celtics team? You know, uh, in the beginning of the year, we all know that that was a different Celtics team than 100%. we're seeing right now. 100%. I honestly think, that especially with Chris Milton being out, I think that the Celtics can win the series in six games. Because I think that they can lock down Giannis for sure. Um, I think that the Bucks, you know, Giannis will definitely kind of carry them to at least one win. And like you said, Grayson Allen's been playing really well lately, especially, you know, against the Bulls. But um, I don't know if he's going to carry that over. We're going to have to see. Um, but, you know, they do have Drew Holiday. He's a solid player. He's a great defender. Uh, but I think that the Celtics, if they keep up what they've been doing recently – I think they can win in six games. That's, yeah. That's my prediction. I think that's a very reasonable prediction as well. I mean, listen, uh, Giannis is his, Giannis is his own man. And I think that he at least is going to will this team to, you know, more wins than the Brooklyn Nets could accomplish. And I think that's, yeah. I think that's very easy to say because the Brooklyn Nets somehow couldn't win a single game against us. So obviously I think that, Giannis has enough willpower to at least get a game out of, out of us. But I do agree the Celtics team ever since, you know, ever since we just decided, I know, 
I'll, I'll say this ever since Bruce Brown came out against us and, and, and ended up saying, Oh, this Celtics team is not going to be the same without Robert Williams. I was like, I think all of them, they kind of looked at themselves and said, okay, we're going to take that personally. And, you know, we're going to just absolutely annihilate you on the court. And that's what they ended up doing. So, uh, you know, the addition of Robert Williams being back, obviously he looks like he hasn't missed a beat. So he's going to be obviously very dangerous when he comes back. The only fear, though, is Giannis has this championship experience that the Celtics don't. He's been to the finals. He's been battle. Re- he's been tested at this point. Obviously, he had tons of help when he did it. But this, this whole team has championship experience. Yeah, pretty much the entire team. So, so that's the issue. Is that you know the Celtics don't have that for, for a you know per se like we do, like yeah sure Tatum and Brown have been to the Eastern Conference Finals, but they've never been on that precipice of a championship. They've never had to battle for that like these guys have. So my big fear is that Giannis is going to not necessarily be that guy that struggled in in the Garden all his life. He's going to actually be able to come out there and really perform. I think that you know he I think this game could I think this. I think re- he, this is going to re- be a real battle for us. I think the Heat will be a great battle if we get, if we manage to get on to a team like them. But Giannis is going to really uh, push us here. I mean, we have a great defensive scheme, so it's going to be a matter as to how Tatum and Brown can match up uh, on him. I think if we get past this round, we will be perfectly fine and we'll be able to have a smoother road to the finals because it's the Heat. Granted, the Heat were the best team in the East this year, but I, I don't think they can stop the, Celt- the Celtics team and either the Sixers. So the, these two series, the Nets and the Bucks, the Nets was a lot easier than I anticipated it being, mm-hmm. which was a shock to everybody. Yeah. So now you go on the Bucks, the defending champions, and they, they have, like you said, that championship experience, but they also want to defend that championship, and they're going to do every means that they can to defend it, and especially Giannis. Mm-hmm. Giannis is one of the most dangerous players in the league. Yes. And he will prove it again. He'll he'll keep proving it. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, with with Middleton being out, like obviously, he, he's a he, he is a revolutionary piece for this for the for that team. So when you look at them going forward, how you know how how much are the Celtics going to be able to really capitalize on that? Obviously, the Celtics, in terms of a playoff team, are the healthiest that I think any team can really be at this point. You know, when Rob Williams went Most down, teams are beat up right now. Absolutely, like the, you, the Bucks are beat up. They, the, um, the, the Heat, heat are, beat are beat up. Yeah, because Jimmy Butler's dealing with some injuries. Who Nin- else is beat up? Sixers are, I think Embiid's a little beat up. Yeah, I mean, but I think he's still playing. He's fine. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's interesting. Yeah. No, obviously, it's very interesting. Obviously, you know, the fact that the Celtics basically have their entire roster, uh, you know, the, the entire roster that they'd want at this point in time ready to go is nothing short of a miracle. They should uh, hopefully be able to take care of things. But uh, you know, Chris, you know, how do you feel about, how, how do you feel about, uh, you know, the, the health of the Celtics, you know, and how do you think that'll help them going forward? I definitely think it's great that they have Robert Williams. I still cannot believe that he came back so fast. I can't either. Uh, what, what? I was actually at the game when he got hurt. Oh, no. uh, and the thing was, I didn't even see it. Yeah, it didn't, it wasn't like a major play. And, you know, after the game, I said, oh, you know, he's going to get like an MRI. You no, know, it's like, ah, you know, he kind of has knee problems sometimes. And then they said that it's a torn meniscus. I said, man, this could be this could be really bad. Yeah, I mean, it for a and... lo- for a team like the Celtics, which has been so emotionally driven over you know this entire new run that they've been on with guys like Tatum and Brown, I figured that this is going to be just the nail in the coffin for this season. This yeah. is, this is going to be the thing that swings the Celtics and gets them off rhythm and you know ruins us for this season. Because I thought that too. Because that's what I, I really. I, 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 I did. Yeah, I really did. I was like, man, this is just frustrating. Yeah, Because not only is it a huge loss for them, but again, they're very, these guys are very young and they're very in their own heads. And when a guy, when you have a setback like that, I thought that, you know, what they were on this great run, everything was clicking for them. And now yeah. they finally face some adversity. And I thought they were going to crack, but you know what? Jason Tatum now looks like he is a top five player in the NBA, which I can't believe that. I, I can't believe that's yeah. the case now. I mean, for so long, I was just like, ah, you know, Tatum's a great player, but he just can't, he, you know, it's, it was almost like when, you know, a guy like Michael Jordan was winning dunk competitions and was a, just had the name Air Jordan was just like that high flying star. He, yeah, sure. Like he was a great superstar, but wasn't doing anything. Then he went off and won his first championship and had the, and had had that type of pedigree going forward. I think you're starting to see Jason Tatum flip from being Oh, that guy with just a ton of athleticism uh, can, you know, really show up in some games to yeah. being a really great mm-hmm. two way at two way player who can make impacts on both sides of the floor. Yeah. And, you know, I think since I think of the Celtics match up pretty well against the Bucks, Absolutely. I know that they were two and two against them this year. And one of the games 
was the one where they kind of blew it in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And I believe that the other one was that they had a lot of injuries or COVID or I don't know what it was, but they missed a lot of guys mm -hmm. and they barely lost that one too. So I, I think I really am pretty confident in this team that they can actually win the series, but Giannis, like you said, he's a top three player in the NBA, in my opinion. And He's, he's going to be a force to reckon with, but I think they can do it. Absolutely. So, obviously, best of luck to the Celtics. They will be taking on the Bucs this Sunday will be the start of game one. Hopefully, uh, it can be – fairly quick series i mean they got a ton of rest right now so that's going to be a great that's yeah. going to be some great help for them but will, now will, will it be too much rest yeah that that, that you you do make a good case yeah, as, yeah. that's always Rather a factor than, yeah because yeah. you do see teams where they'll get a ton of rest and then you know they go forward and they, they just don't have the, that momentum to get started mm -hmm. hopefully that isn't the case with this team because i mean at this point they seem like they're battle tested and they have you know enough experience to know not to do that at this point hopefully yeah. that's the case and you know they can just treat this as quote unquote load management and get ready. But yeah. obviously we're gonna have to see how that goes. But I think that concludes what our NBA segment. Now I want to transition things over to the NFL. It is night two of the NFL draft here. Uh, and you know, while you oh, guys, yeah. while you guys cannot see it, we have a TV, you know, for everyone, on, for people watching on the, uh, on the video stream located in the top corner of the Coffler center. So we're actually watching some of these uh, draft picks come through right now. Uh, obviously we're some, we're, we're, you know, just, uh, you know, a trio of Patriot fans in here. So we're watching, you know, we're waiting to see what they'll do. They have the 54th, the 85th, and the 94th overall draft selection tonight. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully they, uh, you know, either trade up or maybe they make some moves and, you know, actually get some really good talent tonight. So they, they better trade up that the George linebacker is still on the board. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, they have a chance to really make an impact tonight. And, you know, obviously the Pats kind of, they caught some eyes last night because of their draft selection. And, you know, originally they were slated at, they, they were slated at the 21st overall pick and they ended up trading back uh, with the Kansas city chiefs to move to the 29th pick. And with the 29th pick in the draft, they selected Chattanooga Oath offensive lineman Cole strange. And this has gotten a lot of different reactions to this point in time. So, uh, I'm sorry, where, yeah, where's he from Chattanooga where Chattanooga. Yeah. Yes. Wow. What? Yeah. I mean, Chattanooga is fairly known, but uh, you know, he, he got selected from there and now, you know, he's going to be coming, coming, coming into this Patriot system. And a lot of people are saying that this was a stretch by Bill Belichick and I can't help but agree because a stretch. Yeah. Did you, did you just say a stretch? Yeah. Are you kidding me? I'm holding the microphone as close to me as possible because I want to make this an emphasis on stretch, dude. This guy was supposed to be, a potential sneak into the second or yeah. third round. No, I, I was seeing let that. alone first round. Yeah. You know how many players are still on the board that you could select right now? hundred percent. I mean, you know, Chris, I, I don't know if it was you or Tyler that ended up saying before the show that there was like a 93% chance that he was going to be available tonight. Yeah. That was, yeah, you said that. That, that was me. Uh, you know, I, I was playing some basketball last night. I ended up to actually to see the Patriots draft pick live on, uh, on the TV, and I was just like, I didn't even know who the guy was. Yeah. But um, then they showed it, and it said 93% chance that he'd be available at pick 54. And I was just like, that's just kind of weird because I don't know. I mean, it's is it really worth, like, the risk? You know, like, would you, is it worth spending a, a draft pick on a guy that could – that's almost guaranteed to be available at the next one? Yeah, I, which I – It's just a tough call. No, I just don't get it. And, I mean, listen, I get that offensive line is a need for the Patriots right now, and especially for Mac Jones, who's in his second year. Uh, is, you got the guy. You got the guy. Now you got to protect the guy. Yeah, no. So you have to go out and you have to but protect But there's so him. many other players available that are better. Well, it's true, but, you know. th th there are certain players that, that are available that are available that could be better. But I guess for an offensive line standpoint, I've seen some reports that at this point in the draft, he's the best offensive line, you know, for, for his position. He was the best guy available on the board. I, I, you know, at that point. Here's here's a pick I'm interested to see. Yeah. Jets, yeah, it's a New York. Can we, can we, can we, can we, I, I hate to cut off the Patriots talk real quick. Yeah. But can we talk about how great the Jets drafted last they, night? They were awesome. Oh last my night. goodness, Sauce Gardner. I was so happy for him, but I don't want him to go to the Jets because I'm 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 a Cincinnati guy. My cousin went there. If I had to root for a college team, I'd root for Cincinnati. <laughs> but then they drafted Garrett Wilson at ten. Who's Brees Hall. Oh my God, they scored again. Yeah, they, 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 they and then they drafted um Jermaine. Is it Jermaine Johnson? I, I believe think. so. Yes, that guy was so. I was watching some pre-draft analysis of the game of the draft, mm -hmm. and they were talking about that Jermaine Johnson from FSU. They wouldn't be surprised if he went in the top five. 
They got a top five guy, top 10 guy at what? 20, 20 something, 26. Yeah. yeah but, Ty, but Tyler, this draft has been, this draft has been marred as one of the just weirdest, dra- weirder drafts. Cause it's very top heavy. Wow. To wear. Yeah. I mean, wow. Listen. That's four picks in a row that they've hit the nail on the head. <laughs> they've got, they've got their guy at quarterback. They they, they got their guy. I mm-hmm. think he could be the guy. So hear me out. But the, the, and I'm talking about this because this is bad news for the Patriots because mm. all the teams around them are getting scary good. They're Buffalo is insane. Yeah. Uh, Miami's coming up, yeah. and now and now the Jets are starting to put their pe- the pieces to the puzzle together finally after a hundred years. But so you got Garrett Wilson. They got um what what's his name uh the the, the big offensive lineman to protect him. I can't remember his name. I can't either. But he, he's head. he's huge. And now they go and get. Um, Sauce Gardner, which is probably arguably the best available at that spot, mm-hmm. which is so, perfect because their offensive line or defensive line is pretty solid. Yeah. Quentin Williams is up there and his brother is up there. It, it's, it's solid. Yeah. But then you go and add Jermaine Johnson as well. And you're like, okay, now this is a load of defense. Then you go then you're like, all right, we need to address the, 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 the offense. And they drafted Garrett Wilson right after Sauce Gardner at the pick 10. And who's arguably the best receiver in the draft. Mm-hmm. And one of the best receivers to come up in the draft in most recent years. Yeah. And then they have Elijah Moore, who's still there. And they could be still in the mix for Debo He's Samuel. Good. He's good. I like Elijah Moore. I don't know why they're they're in the running for Debo Samuel and they have Elijah Moore. I, I think they should just I say that. say screw it now. I saw that. That's they they, they, get him. they offered they offered a pick for they offered 10 and then a, a fifth round team. pick, a, a, a pick swap, and then yeah. a fifth. Mm-hmm. for Debo yeah. and they, they said no they, they need more than that but this Jets team coached well is looking well and now you go get the running back there's your starting running back right there well you, I don't you know see I don't know much about college football like probably I don't know as many uh, like, Saul is the best running back guys, in the draft but do you is he so I was assuming he's better than uh Michael Carter that they have right now uh, no. he, you think? Yeah, and I'd and, say considerably. Yeah. Okay. And if he's not, this guy's gonna give him a run for his money. Okay. Yeah. See, that's gonna be interesting to watch too, to see which you know which one of those guys kind of takes the lead. I mean, I know, but Michael Carter had some bright spots, but he was kind of injured a little bit last yeah. year. So, yeah. But I, yeah. I'm not sure, but I don't know. It, I mean, it, it'll Jets, be interesting because I remember I when the Browns had two top ten, two top five picks, they scored on both of them. Granted, one of them was Baker Mayfield, mm-hmm. but. That guy led you to the playoffs and won, won you a playoff game. I call I that, I call that, a, that but I call that a complete win. Yeah. I'm, he's dealing with injuries, and now you go I get to Sean Watson. So they're fine. Mm-hmm. But those two picks, they score. I'm pretty sure the Jets just scored on those two top 10 picks. Yeah. I mean, listen, they, they've been making moves all draft. So this is going to be, this is their Hail Mary, this is their Hail Mary attempt. I mean, they, they'll do this fairly often the jets. I mean, whether it be in free agency or in the draft, they'll try to really just hammer some things home. And typically it hasn't ended up well for them. I mean, they can get quality pieces, but it's just the culture around them and everything that kind of goes on there is what's kind of ruined them for a while. So, you know, this is going to be the big test. Can the jets actually get it right? And can they, you know, not ruin these guys? That's going to be the big test that we see here. Uh, I, I, they, they can't ruin sauce Gardner. They can't that, that man, and in his entire collegiate career, didn't give up one touchdown. Not a single one. Really? Not a single one. Look it up. Thousand something snaps. Not a single touchdown did he give up. Hmm. That is your definition of a lockdown corner. Yeah. Lock, lock down. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that the Jets will. And l- let me just tell you this. It's real quick on Sauce Garden. A lot of people are like, yeah, but he played for Cincinnati. Who'd they really play other than, you know, who, um, Alabama? When, when they played in the college football playoff. Yeah. But in that game, Sauce Gardner locked down every receiver he was on. Mm. He wow. did the same thing. Yeah. You're locked right. him, locked him down. Career, and and one of them was Jamison Williams, was drafted first round last year. Yeah. Uh, was drafted first round this year to Detroit. Yeah. So he's good. No, I mean, you make a good point, but here's the thing. I'm not saying that the Jets will, oh, oh, uh, you know, screw up these guys' careers. But like, they're like, still the Jets. Well, yeah, but here's the thing. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, but here's the thing. That, that's a weak talking point to say that they're just the Jets. I mean, listen, 
I think that they have some weaknesses that can really screw them up. But, you know, when it comes to the Jets and you look at this team, it's not a matter of, you know, them necessarily screwing up a guy's career like they did a like they did a Sam Darnold. The fear is that they waste more is that they more waste a guy's career like they did a Darrell Revis. You want a you want a lockdown corner comparison? Take Darrell Revis. I mean, yes. you know, was a dynamite lockdown corner has when, when he came in the NFL. And obviously, yeah, he he actually had a lot of success with the Jets by, be, by being able to make it to but a couple the coach they had for Darrell Revis. Yeah. Was one of the best defensive coaches in the NFL. Yeah. But here's, but here's the thing though. I'm not saying that Rex Ryan isn't a good defensive mind, but when you put him on the offensive side of the ball, uh, when, uh, when you put him in charge of the whole operation, he can't necessarily, no. he can't be in charge of the entire, uh, he can't necessarily work with the defense all, all the time. The Jets defenses were always fine. It was just the fact that their offense was so putrid that their defense could never make up for it. Yeah, you can have a dynamite defense, but if your offense is going to, you know, literally, you know, fumble the ball off another guy's, off another guy's ass in, you know, in a primetime game, I mean, you're going to be screwed. Yeah, no, no, you're right. But both New York teams scored last night. Yeah. I mean, both. yeah. I mean, yeah, the Giants got Kayvon Thibodeau, who was great. I mean, that, that was a great story with the uh, Make-A-Wish kid that, that announced the pick. That was awesome. That was, that, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. So, cool. so I'm looking at the, the Jets defense right now. You add Sauce Gardner and Jermaine Johnson mm -hmm. paired with Quentin Williams, Sheldon Rankins, CJ Mosley. Yeah. Um, the other brother. Uh, what's his name? Something Williams. Uh, Quincy Williams. Yeah. Um, he's he's their other linebacker, but these these guys just put them in another like car car is it Carl Lawson? Carl Lawson, he's another one defensive end. You pair these guys with them, you're golden. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I think one of their draft picks should be a safety. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think that I think that's well within the realm of possibility. There, I think that similar to a similar to a Mac Jones, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to get some O line help to protect Zach Wilson a little bit more. I mean, they've done that already, but I would Mackay definitely Beckton, yeah, that's his name. But I would definitely say you got to do some more. I would definitely say that it doesn't hurt to protect a guy like him because you know get getting this back on track to the Patriots now. I mean, you know. They needed to. They needed to go out and get some O line help. I don't necessarily yes. know if it's the right time to do it though, because from, you know, from what everyone else is saying is that this guy's going to be available. However, Bill Belichick comes out and ends up saying no. There was going to be a team like right after us that was interested in taking this guy, so we needed to jump on it now. And I'm like, okay, but what are you possibly robbing yourself of at this he, point? He, they, they do more. They do know more than we do. Yeah. I mean, this is their job, but. How many people do you think were but, saying that about Kyle Duggar? I mean, I, I don't know. Second round for a Division Two player? That, that that's what gets me. And Chatt here, is Chattanooga Division One? Yeah, they're, they're Division One. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, but here's the thing, though. You, you, I I think the comparison is very similar. Yes, it's still way worse than the Kyle Duggar one. I mean, but Kyle Duggar's kind of worked it out. Exactly, kind of worked that's out. my point. So Kyle I'm not, Duggar worked out. Now I'm not saying that Cole Strange couldn't work out, but I'm saying. As a first round pick, is he going to be just a, you know, fill in the gap, you know, starting level, you know, starting level guard, or is he going to be like the next Joe Thomas that you put in there and is a, just a landmark piece of your O-line? They're comparing him to Logan Mankins. Yeah. And if we can get Logan Mankins type play out of him, oh, that's a huge. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that'd be awesome. Logan Mankins is one of the best players to play for the Patriots. Okay. Arguably. Yeah. And I mean, listen, O-line can generally be a safe position to go with. Most guys are able to do their job and, you know, it's an easier transition to the NFL. It can a lot be. Easier. It can be. So, yeah. but my, my fear is that, you know, he's had this guy, uh, Cole Strange has had some incidents. I know at the senior bowl, there were like some highlights of him getting absolutely just pancakes and just like, just like, he just looked like <laughs> he just looked atrocious. And I think he, he did. I saw some of his highlights. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. It was really bad. Yeah. I they, mean, I mean, I, I saw like, I think there he were highlights if they weren't good. No, right? exactly. I think he got a zero. <laughs> point zero grade at at the, at the senior bowl for they see uh, something yeah, yeah. they see something no one else sees uh, yeah i mean that's what belichick and i can known guarantee for, you right? belichick's gonna make everybody regret it yeah maybe i mean but listen how often are you gonna relate are you gonna regret no line pick you know a lot of teams will say oh yeah we always got to improve o line but you know uh, these teams right now it's a skill position league of course it is like you're always trying yeah. to improve on the skill side so yeah whether you missed on an o lineman or not great let's go pick up a guy in free agency and go get and go get someone to fill in there I mean, I, that's typically the way you see O-line. And, you know, a lot of the times you can fill in guys that are undrafted. You can find late round guys. And obviously yeah, they've got that, two starters that were undrafted. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, exactly. Two, so two guards. Yeah. So you can figure this stuff out. It's not a, it's not rocket science. Haran? Is it Haran? 
I believe so. Yeah. Iran, I'm pretty sure was undrafted. He was like fifth round. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, it's, it's something that kind of comes with, that comes with it, but you know, as the Patriots move on and in, in later in the draft, they need to go do something to address skill positions here, I, whether that's getting John Mechie or getting someone else, they need to do something here to, you know, really make a splash. He's still on the board. Yeah. They, um, uh, Green Bay took the dude from North Dakota State. Yeah. So I can't remember his name. But he, yeah, the the, uh, the receiver, right? Yeah. yeah. I saw that. Receiver. So, yeah. yeah. So they Green, traded up for him. Yep. Yeah. So Green Bay moved up. They got a receiver. They got their number one. I still like the idea of, of getting John Mechie in New England because they have that Alabama connection with Mac Jones. Get him in here. But he'll, he'll be how comfortable. How many other needs do you need before a receiver? They don't need a big – they don't need a receiver right now. The Patriots, they could, you mean? They could draft very late for a receiver. They don't need one. They yeah, got but, yeah, but when you're Parker, drafting – but when – They got born Aguilar – at a certain um, at a certain and Myers, and Myers, yeah. At a certain point though, like drafting late for a receiver just doesn't end up panning out well. I mean, sure, I'd rather almost get an undrafted receiver than draft late for a receiver. But it's worth more point. shot than wasting a bit a, a pick when you can go draft a linebacker because we got rid of Kyle Van Noy, which I still am confused about. Heck, you know what? Kyle Van Noy, he was great this year. I think he's I think I think he's I think there's I think there's not much <coughs> fuel left in that tank. But yeah. you 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 needed linebacker. Yeah, you need. They need to draft a linebacker. Okay. Well, I could be wrong, but didn't the Patriots last year waste a pick on a kicker that never played for them? Yeah, uh, I think that was in 2020. Or 2020. They did. I didn't know. I know what one the year. Heck? Then, yeah. Well, yeah, that well, was from the like, practice squad. That was a that was a pick that could have been. Yeah, it was a uh, Justin. You know, yeah, the that that kicker it was, it was just a kicker from Marshall, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, it was yeah. Justin Rohrwasser. He was a very good kicker, but then got into some trouble because he had like a uh, an extremist like tattoo. They found I out. I remember that. And yeah. they like the Patriots apparently just didn't do enough scouting to know that. And as soon as they found out about That's, it, they basically just, that is crazy he's on yeah. the practice squad yeah interesting they told him to cover it up i mean yeah. you know nick folk was really good for them this year though so it's it clutch he yeah. was clutch. he was like one of the best kickers in the league last well, year that crazy. kick against tampa that he missed that's a tough kick that I mean, was a really hard kick there's only one kicker in the that. world that i would tr- be like what you miss that and that's adam and terry mm-hmm he, he'd make that kick 10, nine times out of 10. Eh, I, I don't know about that because there was a lot of things going into it for, for that kick with Nick Folk. Obviously, that was a tough kick. I mean, the but, weather yeah, too. It was, was, it, really was in, tough it was in the rain. It was a, it was a last second field goal a attempt. Lot of pressure. And he just from, missed it. From great distance. Yeah. And well, the other thing too is he had, he had a bat. He was uh, dealing with an injury in his knee, in his plant leg at the time. Exactly. So, wow. Yeah. So the fact that no it, injury, he makes it. Yeah, exactly. And like, we beat Tom Brady. That's so, pretty funny. Yeah. So listen, we, we have that there. It's coming but, back this year though. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously Screw that guy. the Patriots yeah. made some great moves this year and, are, and uh, you know, they're, we're going to have to see what they do later on in the draft. Obviously people are calling out the Cole strange pick, uh, but you know, there were some other, there were some other picks, uh, and some other moves that happened during the draft last night too, which also caught some eyes. Big one headlines. of which, one of which was, uh, AJ Brown of the Tennessee Titans getting shipped <laughs> off to Philadelphia in exchange for the 18th overall and the 101st overall pick in the draft. So he ends up going there and they, uh, you know, obviously Philly's now got probably one of the more dynamic receiver duos in the NFL now with Devonte Smith and AJ Brown. I mean, okay. you can't get any better hear, than that. Hear me out. Now I want to talk about AJ Brown real quick. I put a list together, uh, the top 15 receivers in the league. Where do you think you would put AJ Brown on that list? Well, I saw your list, so I know where you put them, but where would you think you'd be on that list? I don't think AJ Brown is top 10. I, I, I don't have him top I, 10. I, I don't Not think yet. he is, but yeah. You said like top 15. He's I think, well on his way though. Top 10. I don't well know, man. Like he's just, I feel like he's just like an inconsistent player sometimes. Like, you know, mm. he has, but he has, he has some huge games though. Like I when, put him like when, when he's on, he's on, you know? Wait, so what do you think? Give me a number. Top 10, top, 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 top 15. I'd say 14. Put him at 12. Okay. I would, I would have to see like everybody to, to really, you in know, in front like, of DK, Waddle and Mike Williams. That's fair. Yeah. I would, I would probably do the same. He's good, but he, He's got some proving to do now because Mike Vrabel is a great coach. Mike Vrabel is going to be true. one of one of the best co- in the, he's one of the best young coaches in the league right now, and he's going to be in Tennessee for a long time. He, he's not leaving Tennessee. Mm-hmm. They, they'll get they'll redo that entire team and keep him. Yeah, as they should. I mean, listen, you're going to have a dynamic receiver duo in Philly now with Devonte with, with, yes. with Devonte no, Smith and, with Devonte Smith and AJ Brown. Obviously, that's going to be dynamite for the for the Eagles. Only question now is. Can Jalen Hurts be the be the savior to really take that duo to the next level? I was actually no. talking about this with my friends earlier. Um, you know, I don't know. I think Jalen Hurts <laughs> is hated on by a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I think he's a little bit 
like overrated at times, but I think I think they should give him another chance. Uh, I think well, they well, right. well, at least... well, well, this is Jalen Hurts' chance right here. Yeah. He has his chance right here in this moment. And there were like a and, lot of questions around and, him. Because I think he can at least pull through yeah. to some extent. Well, because a lot of teams too were, were saying that they were going to, you know, move off that we're saying we're saying that the Eagles were going to try to get away from Jalen Hurts. They were going to try to restart at quarterback. Yeah. And, and then people basically ended up saying, no, this year is going to be Jalen Hurts' last chance to get it right. If it doesn't get, you know, any better, then they're going to just pull the plug on it. So Dude, I, this is what we're going to see here. This is it for Jalen Hurts. They, the, he's got all the, the keys. Yeah, this, he's got the keys the to the year. castle now. It's it's very similar to the situation with Tua in Miami, to where yeah. I was it, actually just going to mention Tua. Yeah, how it, many? It, it's very similar to that situation to where yeah. the Dolphins just got up, just went out and just you know broke the bank, beefed up their team for Tyreek Beef. Hill. They just they Tyree broke the Hill, bank, yeah. got Tyreek Hill, and now we're and now we're matching him up with with uh, Jalen Waddle or uh, yeah with Waddle. Now yeah, the Tyreek Hill is my third rank. Now the Let's Eagles see. go out and get and get Smith and get get uh, Brown for him and Smith. I think at this point, like you can't get any better for, for Hertz. And I, I think at this point, like, like you actually have people to throw to. So I'm just like, he's got to at least show it some sign of improvement. Like, like that, that's the thing for me. He has to show at least some sort of, you know, upward trajectory at this point. So I think that so he'll, I think he'll make his way up. My problem is that this, this is going to be it for Jalen Hurts. If he can't prove it, this is it. Because I think it might be the quarterback class next year is very, very deep. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a lot you got the dude from Alabama. Um, it's, it's Bryce young. Yeah. yeah Bryce yes. young. And then you got yeah, he won the, the dude, the dude from Bama. I don't remember his name. What's his name? Dude from Bama. Does anybody know CJ Stroud? He'll be up there. And, um, the, uh, apparently a Boston college guy, um, DJ, DJ, Ugawale, how do you say his name? You said that right. JT Dan JT Daniels will be in there. So there, there's gonna be and then the dude from something Jefferson from Arkansas. And then there's gonna be um Spencer Radler will be in there. So mm -hmm. we'll see what he can do at South Carolina. But it's gonna be a heavy quarterback class next year. So there's guys that have to prove it this year, and two of them are Tua and Jalen Hurts. Yeah, they have to, they both have the keys of the castle now. I have what no faith happen? in Tua. No, I, 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 I don't. I don't. I, do. think, I don't, I don't think best, he, that he's that guy. Tua's had one opinion. of the best passer ratings. You know, who, I, I don't. Think when he's healthy, that guy. but the problem is, is he needs to stay healthy. You know who when Tua? He's, healthy, too, he's yeah, good. Yeah, well. You know who Tua? You know who Tua reminds me of? He reminds me of Russell Westbrook now. <laughs> To where I don't know he he play he plays he's like this bulkier you know kind of point guardish like kind of quarterback he's just gonna make these basic passes over the middle and Holy kind of just, and kind of just play like that I'm so it. I'm calling this pick right now you heard it here folks I'm calling this pick right now the Seahawks pick forty is gonna be Malik Willis all right well we'll have to see how that we'll have yeah, to see we how have that ends up going pick I call in. I called pick the in. number one pick yesterday oh yeah I called the number one pick. I knew he was going to be Trayvon Walker. I knew they I mean, weren't going Aiden Hutchinson. I mean, if all, all you had to do was look at the Vegas odds for that, and you would have seen that he was trending that way. <laughs> so, I mean, interesting. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm good, man. I'm yeah. good. I mean, listen, you know, there were some other great moves too. Another receiver that was put on the move was uh, Marquise Hollywood oh, Brown. Here he we went, go. He went to the Cardinals. Well, before, we, before we discuss that, though, that is the Seahawks pick is coming in. We're going to see if Tyler was correct. Damn it! No, <laughs> nope, nope. The uh, they ended up taking boy. They ended up taking boy Maif, an edge, an edge rusher from Minnesota. So Tyler, nope. The Seahawks do not get Damn. Malik Willis. One so. for two now. Yeah. So anywho, uh, now on to Marquise Hollywood Brown. He's going to the Cardinals in exchange for a twenty third overall for the twenty third overall pick. He requested a trade twice yeah. mm -hmm. oh, last really? year and this year. Yeah, I didn't so, know he did and, that. Oh, and man. nobody knew about it. Yeah. So think he, about that. That's so he, interesting. So I know that uh he Lamar like the was system. Lamar was not too happy about that last night. No. He doesn't he doesn't like the system. Uh but yeah. Now but he's going to Arizona. Arizona. That's the same was, system. Tyler was hyped last night. I, I'd so. say it's I I'd, I'd say it's a dip more I'd say it's a different system. I'd say there's definitely more passing involved that system. But Obviously it's more college style yeah. where he excelled. Yeah, yeah, and true. And I think for Kyler, like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Does, does Kyler run the ball? Sure, yeah. Kyler runs the ball, but does he yeah. do nearly as much of? Does he do nearly as much I as hate Kyler Murray? I just want to get that. Dude, off my Kyler chest. Murray is like my favorite player in the NFL, bro. He's I was a baby. I really. You also like LeBron that's James? True. No, because he's a baby too. I know. I hate LeBron, but that's that's a whole different uh, you know thing. But I like Kyler's play style. But like you know, he has to replace Christian Kirk. I really hope that he can. 
you know, step That's up really this year. That's really not that hard to do. But, yeah, no, no, I'm talking about Kyler. I, I hope that he can step up this year because last year was – the end of last year was – that was horrible. Yeah, that, it was a bit like, for him. The that end was, of last was, year, baby. Was tough. Yeah, I mean, it was he's a, just he's just really short, you know. Yeah. yeah, he started pointing fingers as to why they lost. Yeah, he was well. He had a oh, man. Yeah, he had a bad play the uh, against. Oh, wait a minute. They're picking again. Yeah, the Seahawks are picking again. Ladies and so, gentlemen, Seattle has now back. traded for the forty-first pick. Yeah, we're gonna see what they end up doing here. If this is Malik Willis, I'm gonna <laughs> I'll be very angry. Yeah, let's see what the Seahawks do here. Please be Malik Willis. It has Please to be. be Malik. It has to be. Please be Willis here. Come on, Roger. Come on. I hate him. All right. Just want to get that off. Forty first overall pick. The I'm Seahawks not, select. I'm not the biggest fan. Kenneth Walker. That is a stupid pick. <laughs> that back. is a stupid pick. You you have Rashad Penny who excelled last year. Yeah. Oh my God, are they stupid? <laughs> be Carroll. They got a Retire. lot of running backs. I don't know what's going on with their running back department. But Retired. Retired. Well, towards the end of last season. I wish he went to a different team. He's good. Yeah. Rated as a 79 overall. Apparently, they already have this dude's Madden rating out. Like what the Kenneth heck? Walker, the second, a running back from Michigan State, was the Dope Walker Award winner. Just the best running back in the nation. Interesting. Hmm. So, I mean, listen, I mean, he proved something to you, Tyler. So, if you guys are looking at these picks right now, where do you think that Malik Willis is going to go? You know, I look at it, uh, trying try to game plan it out. New Orleans could Malik be, Willis is a quarterback for those of you that do not understand. I would say New, New Orleans could be an interesting position for Malik Willis because obviously you got you got Winston there, but Winston's always kind of been like here. Winston, I don't know if he's the permanent option. If I, Sean, I, Payton, I, 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 if I Sean think, Payton's still there, you don't take quarterback. Sean Payton and James Winston, perfect combo. Hey, you know what? They're, they're the perfect combo, but I, I don't know if I don't know if Winston's the permanent solution. I think Malik Willis coming from a smaller, you know, university in Liberty, it wouldn't be the worst position to put him there and see how he could do. That's valid. Yeah. But I'm I don't know. The Seahawks just botched this. This they botched this draft right now. Mm-hmm. So obviously, yeah, we're gonna have to see what happens there. I think, but going back to Marquise Brown, I think that he'll be a good uh you know, p- good person to put in there uh, to, oh, com- yeah. to compliment, uh, to compliment D hop, you know, I just have him go on some uh, fly routes yeah. down the field. He'll be real. He'll be able to use his speed and be awesome there. Uh, yeah. Just one, just wanted to get a final word on, in on that, but uh, another draft selection from, from night one that I want to talk to you about, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we're, t- we were talking about quarterbacks and we're talking about Malik Willis, but oh. the man who stole the show last night oh. was, was the Pittsburgh man himself, Kenny Pickett yeah. going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Terrible pick. Yeah. Terrible. You think so? I don't think Kenny Pickett is going to be anything at all. Okay. I mean, listen, I I'll take, but I don't think he's going to be anything at all. I mean, could you, could you ask me why? I don't know, but I mean, I don't think he like will have be. that, have that, uh, that feeling, you know, he just, just like, he know. looks tiny. He has got, he's got smaller hands, which is just who gives a crap because so did Joe Burrow and Joe Burrow is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. I mean, That's listen, true. I don't think it has to do anything about his size. I just think that, the Steelers didn't, in, in terms of quarter, in terms of quarterback play, they didn't do an, they didn't improve by any means. All they did is just get a sec, is just get another Mitchell Trubisky. That's all they did. Like that's literally who Kenny Pickett is. Is you know he's a typical you know drop back quarterback who has some ability to use his legs and and be effective like that. I'd say a little bit more so than a guy like Trubisky, but you know. I, it's not going to be that it's not it's not going to be that dynamic i don't i just see kenny pickett as like you know one of these like like a brian hoyer type is almost how i see it kenny pickett to where yeah yeah he, that's he, a great to, comparison to where he can Thank come you. in to where he can where to basically where he can come in you know manage a game yeah. if, if your star quarterback goes down but all in all i don't see kenny pickett being the next you know great Steelers quarterback after ben roethlisberger he's not gonna be anything it, special it almost just seems like he was like like they ended up seeing the pittsburgh connection ended up saying Oh well, we can't we, we can't get the Liberty kid, and then like and then like the kid that was literally playing in our stadium go somewhere else. Like we're we'll never be able to live that down. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I, I just don't know how. I just don't know really why why they had to feel like Kenny Pickett was the move there. I just didn't understand it, and I think that I, I mean again, I, I think I, it was an intriguing move for the Steelers. When I saw it happen, I you know my jaw dropped, but uh, I don't know. I really think they should have waited until next year to draft the quarterback. These quarterbacks aren't anything special. No, I don't think so at all. That's even, what I heard. I heard that this class is very strong. Even, Malik Willis is the only one that has something special. And I'm only saying this because I'm a Cincinnati guy, but I can see Desmond Ritter as being solid, but he needs two, one or two years to sit somewhere, but he needs to find the right people. Mm. But I don't like Kenny Pickett at all. No, I mean, listen, I, I just – Kenny Pickett, Sam Howell, nothing. 
Yeah, Matt Corral. Like I, I these guys just seem like nothing. I it, like I don't see yeah, any day average oh, the Joe. Colts, the Colts just traded their pick. Yeah, to the Vikings. So the I don't Vikings. See, I don't see anything necessarily special with the that. Vikings or the team. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. kind of. So well, I I don't necessarily see anything mediocre, special with yes. Kenny Pickett. Yeah. I think that you know there's a chance you know give him a good team and he could you know you know rattle off a couple wins for you. But I don't necessarily think that he's going to be you know some franchise changing guy. <laughs> Uh, you know, as we, as we move forward in, in the, uh, in, into the, uh, into the night though, uh, we're looking at, we're looking at picks from the draft, you know, Malik Willis, if you want to think of a team to go to the Vikings could be a legitimate option. Kirk cousins is only there on a one year, $35 million contract through 2023. You know, he's terrible. Yeah. Kirk cousins has got a great agent because that man somehow secures, these really high contracts the for mediocre play. Oh yeah, well, let me tell you. I, I mean, he know. finesses these contracts. So listen, I have no he's idea. He's always he does solid, it. but he can't get the job done. Yeah. So Minnesota, anyway, Minnesota, he's just, he's just like average, you know. Yeah. So Minnesota could low key be a destination for uh, for Malik Willis because I mean, I like Malik Willis here. Yeah, you, I do you, like Malik Willis you, here. You could sit him behind Kirk for a year, get him that experience. I think Kirk's at least a good enough guy to mentor Kirk. someone and get it and push and put him forward. And then after that, you go from there. Yeah, so Kirk, Kirk is not a, Kirk Cousins is not a bad quarterback to sit behind. And many people will, will disagree with me, but the man's got a great experience. He'll be like, yo, he'll be like, well, why'd you do this? And he'll completely explain to that. Yeah. Which is, there's a lot of quarterbacks that I wish sat behind somebody, uh, somebody, one of them being Zach Wilson. I, I like Zach Wilson. I, yeah. I don't like that he's done the Jets, obviously, because I hate the Jets, but I, I, I like him. And then there's players that don't need it. Like yeah. Mac, Mac Jones doesn't need it. Trevor Lawrence doesn't need it either. No, not at yeah, all. Those those two were game ready. Mac Jones just landed in the right system, but yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, anyways, uh, you know, before we do go down to the wire, guys, I, there is one big story I want to discuss. Uh, if in the middle of it we end up, you know, getting this Vikings pick, we'll cover that. But uh, in you know, in the in the you know, in the spirit of the draft, uh, there was one draft story which caught my uh-huh. mind, and this was one that you know was from a couple years back. And for those of you who aren't too familiar with the NFL, there was once a guard by the name of Laramie Tunsil. I'll discuss this after the Vikings selection because they're about to make their pick right here. Let's see if this is the, if this is the destination for Malik Willis. The quarterback of the future. Selection. Is this him? Uh, I mean, uh, not on the stage. That's uh, Ed, Mar- that's, uh, Ed Maria. Is Ed- this him? Yeah. No, I know that's not him. I know. Just, just <laughs> that man's got gray here. hair. Yeah, just go with me here. That Tyler. man's got. I know my mom's listening. That's got gray hair like my mom. Oh, that, that, that's just rude. <laughs> that's just rude. Oh my god. All right. All right. They're gonna do their whole <laughs> spiel. They're gonna talk about how great the Vikings are, even though they've never, you know, won a Super Bowl. I mean, they have, haven't they? No, they have never. They've been. They used to. They've been there. Mm. Yeah. And then they got their. Then they got the crap kicked out of them. So. We're going to see what they do here. Uh, you know, I talk all this crap about the Vikings, but, you know, fellow co-hosted down the wire, Tyler Tucker is watching this probably right now uh, on pins and needles. He's probably like, what the hell are they going to do here? Vikings so, fan? Yeah. That's the other. I the, feel bad. The other Tyler on this show is a Vikings fan. So bad. we're going to see what he does here. Well, he's probably saying that about Pats fans after they drafted a dude from Chattanooga. <laughs> yeah. I mean, fair, I, fair enough. <laughs> we're going to see what they do though. All right. Come on, make the selection. Yeah, please. they really like to milk it. They must, they have to got they have to have a quarterback then. I mean, it's gotta be. Jesus Christ, this guy wants to really just do a whole speech. Oh my god. Oh my god. So they're really like milking this thing. Wow. Come on, man. Announce it. <sighs> Dude, I'm gonna do I can go do my laundry right now. Yeah, I mean, they really like to do this. So uh yeah, I mean, listen, I'm trying to think. As we move forward, you know, with the NFL draft, you know, what, what are what are some you know areas of need that you would want to see, like the Patriots, you know, after we talked about linebacker, we talked about linebacker, receiver. some more offensive line isn't bad, and then defensive line, yeah, man, well, I mean, yeah, Lawrence guy, I mean, we, we need to get faster on defense. That that's the whole objective for us. So honestly, need- honestly, this Patriots team, once they get a linebacker, this team's pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, and safety, McCordy's getting old. I mean, Jesus Christ, this guy is doing That's a true. full-on State of the Union address right now. Like, what the hell is going on with this guy? I mean, he's going to die up on stage. My goodness. Wow. It's got to be Malik Willis. Make right? the oh, – Yeah, they're literally, they're literally telling him to read the card yeah. right now. Oh, wow. They just Jesus told him to Christ. read the card. Yeah, that's bad. Okay, so they, they realize that. Come on, that. man. Make the pick. Jesus Dude, make Christ. the pick. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Yeah, hey, look at this. this guy, everyone, everyone right now is standing around – 
what is he doing? Oh my God. All right. Let's see what he says. He's pissed. Wow. This guy is pissed. All right. Let's see what he does. Just read. <laughs> wow. And it was for a cornerback. All of that waiting for, for a, a cornerback stupid cornerback from Clemson. That dude is like, dude, say my name already. Yeah. He's like, he's like, he's like, I got the call. I just want to celebrate with my family. So all of that commotion just for a guy to get selected and not have it even be a, a franchise changing quarterback. Just Ladies and be- gentlemen, a lady came out on stage, headset and all, that works in the back, and told him to read the card she was, already. Yeah, she was like, get on with it. Just read the freaking card. That wow. Was, that was ridiculous. That's a first. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't so, think I've ever seen that. All right. We're, we're going we're gonna to relive. Anyways. We, we need to discuss this Laramie Tunsil story. So it's uh, really funny. Yeah. So, again, for anyone for anyone who doesn't know the story of Laramie Tunsil, he was a he was a guard coming out of Ole Miss back uh, a couple of years ago. And right – it was literally on draft night, a – I think his stepdad or someone leaked somebody a, leaked someone leaked a photo yeah. of him, you know, just absolutely video. Just, yeah, absolutely just getting fried off a uh, off a gas mask, just taking a bong rip off it. And he literally th- this this video comes out. And for anyone who doesn't know that if for if you watched the NFL at the time, this video was like groundbreaking, like like news. Like everyone was like freaking out about it because like Laramie Tunsil at this time was like a like generational offensive and it line happened in college. Yes. And it happened the video in- was from college. Yeah. So the wow. video is from college. Everyone's like freaking out and, and it's going, what the hell is going on here? So he ends up, he ends, so basically this all starts happening. <coughs> and, uh, you know, Larry Tunsil was originally supposed to get taken with the sixth overall pick by the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens pass on him because they don't want the drama. He falls to the Miami Dolphins at pick 13 and, and has a great and has a great, uh, you know, career there. Benching gets straight to the Houston Texans. And Which makes, is who was supposed to draft him first overall, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a chance he was going to be like a first overall draft pick. He dropped the 13. So, I mean, listen, this man still became a millionaire, but he lost out on a lot of money. He lost out on at least $10 million. At least. So he drops down. Down and ends up and you know he actually has made a good career for himself he's 27 years old now he's, he's solid he made, yeah he's played six seasons and he made back-to-back pro bowls in 2019 to 2020 he's, so he, he's your type of player that is in the league for a long time but bounces around yeah he's never gonna have a solidified spot but he's gonna bounce around because he's solid yeah but, but so here's the thing too like like you know people talk about him people were fearing that he was going to cause all this drama in the nfl that was never the case. I've never really heard any drama surrounding Laramie Tunsil since he's gotten to the NFL. Like, I mean, oh, I'm a, no problems. Yeah, which is incredible to me. I mean, maybe they drug test him like up the wazoo, but like exactly, he I is, can guarantee he's been tested like like a bat out of hell. So like, Probably. but but he doesn't. But he, I've never had, I've never seen him cause any issues. And you know, I I, I kind of feel bad for him for a sense because this kind of did turn his life upside down. And he lost out on a so, lot of money, but now. We have, yeah. Oh, wow. They're they re- showed a replay of it. Yeah, that's incredible. But now we have the, uh, but now, you know, t- uh, Laramie Tunsil has come out and has since said that, you know, he didn't want to talk about this video for a long time. It was a very embarrassing and touchy <clears throat> topic for him. But now he has come out and has done the most 2022 thing I think I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. By turning this video that basically almost ruined his life into a one of one NFT mm-hmm. to sell the charity. Yeah. And I'm like, you can't make this stuff up. And not only is he yeah. selling it to charity, he's selling it to, you know, get funds to go to people that, and basically help bail people out of jail that are in on marijuana charges. And I'm like, w- way to flip the script, man. Like that is, a, that is incredible. I got to hand it off to, uh, to Laramie Tunsil for that. I could not think of something like that. That is awesome. The fact that he was able to do this. So the ultimate, is, the ultimate Uno reverse card. Oh my right God. There. I mean, Facts, yeah. this man, this man literally lost out on millions of dollars and managed to turn his own Oak like tree. Yeah. He managed to turn his own like possible, like worst. Speaking of Houston. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there. he managed to turn his worst possible moment in history into literally like something very positive. Yeah. Into something that could make him a lot of money. Like, can you imagine taking your most embarrassing moment of your life? And turning it into something that could potentially be worth millions of oh, dollars. That would be awesome for me. Yeah. That would be just awesome. switch it up. I'm not going to ask you what it is. Don't ask. Yeah. It's so, pretty just, embarrassing. But just imagine having a video of it and then having it turn into an NFT that you could then make millions of dollars off of. That would be awesome. I know. That would be amazing. Like, that would be awesome. So I'd be, I'd be very, very famous. So, I mean, for terrible reasons. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what did you do? What did you do? Nothing. Nothing all right. at all. All right. Well, Chris. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Appreciate uh, it, man. Yeah, yeah it, man. It was fun. Uh, you know, talking about the 
you know, just everything while the draft is going on is yeah, pretty I mean, fun too. I mean, obviously so. that, that, that's kind of the craziness that goes on when we do, when we do a show during the draft. I remember uh, when COVID first happened, we did a quarantine special where we actually did, uh, where we actually reviewed night two of the NFL draft. We were, uh, we, you know, reviewed the second round and everything going on with that. And we had special guests on at the time and That's you cool. know, it was incredible to episode when we did that. So it was kind of cool to kind of get back in this mode and, you know, watch the draft again, have to discuss things like this. So, uh, you know, I thank you guys for coming on the show tonight, but unfortunately we are down to the wire which means that we're going to review everything we talked about in this episode and send you guys off into the weekend obviously we welcomed on special guest chris drink to the show chris thanks again man we really do appreciate it it was fun man i was honored and i would be glad to come on again if uh, if i'm given the chance a hundred percent man you're more I'm hyped for next year you know big things coming so absolutely you're more than welcome yeah. to come things. back on the show big things uh you know obviously chris i get once again is the host of the dog talk radio show here on campus so make sure you go check him out is there anything you want to shout out personally with that oh uh, well yeah so it's on thursdays from five to six it's me and my boys uh aiden and carter uh we host a radio show uh, for the first half, we talk about, uh, you know, like the recent sports news and what's going on. Usually, sometimes we talk about the sports here at Bryant. And in the second half, we interview either one of our friends or one of the athletes or just someone here on campus. Um, and, yeah, so it's it's fun, and I'm excited to continue it into next semester. Well, I mean, you got a, you got a fellow athlete on this show, so if you ever need a, if you ever need a guest, Tyler, I don't know, oh, yeah. I don't know what your schedule is looking like, but I don't want to volunteer you for anything. But I don't know mm-hmm. if you if you ever if you ever want to get interviewed and you know discuss something like that. Got you. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, it, 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 Let me know. It's you know, every sport is interesting to interview now that we're in a different conference. Absolutely, every that's true. Sport is very different. America East, man. Everybody East. is their competition is very different. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, there's a ton of great things that we can talk about with that, uh, but, but we obviously kick things off tonight talking about the Boston Celtics and previewing their series against the Milwaukee Bucks. Oh, yeah. We then hopped into night one of the NFL draft and talked about the Patriots selection of Cole Strange and, and basically broke down that. Uh, something else quickly that I found that I found interesting with that is after the selection, Sean McVay uh, and, you know, G and uh, Rams GM Les Snead <laughs> were, were reacting clip. to the pick live and they They're making up, fun of us. Oh, I saw this clip. They, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They ended up saying they ended up saying shame on us at that because as because we thought this guy was gonna be available at pick 104 and i had him going well damn either either, oh. the, either the rams didn't get uh either the rams didn't think this out or to the either the rams didn't think this out or basically you know like or you know they were basically dissing the patriots before we do go obviously uh you know as we're going down the wire here we're reviewing a couple things big pickup here john mechi the guy i wanted on the patriots no Goes to the goes to the Houston Texans. He's filthy, man. Oh, look at him. Goes Whoa, to play with look at that. Davis yeah. Mills goes to play with him. Oh my God. It's gonna be they're they're gonna be filthy together. Davis John Mills, the they quarterback got, that torched the Patriots out of yeah. nowhere. I know. They got Brandon Cooks too. Uh oh, man. Uh, John Mechie is a guy I wanted. I'm I'm really pissed that the Patriots did not make a move for him. That that that's very disappointing, honestly. Like <laughs> you know, I, I I talked about Cole Strange on this show. We had us we had a chance to go out and do something, and you know. John Mechie is a guy I really wanted. So the fact that we oh, didn't go out and get that. him is really going to be, a, is it really does suck. So we talked about that. We talked about uh, the Patriots selection of Cole Strange. We talked about AJ Brown to the Eagles and Marquise Brown to the Cardinals. We talked about Kenny Pickett to the Steelers and everything involved with them. We and... all, we also wrapped up and, you know, did a live coverage of round two of the NFL draft. Oh, yeah. Obviously a lot of crazy moving parts here it was great to discuss that. Uh, and we ended things off talking about Laramie Tunsil and his gas mask incident being turned into yeah. a one of one NFT. Obviously, tonight was kind of all over the place. It was a crazy episode because we we're reviewing things live in time. So we appreciate you guys for tuning in. But before you go, make sure you go follow us over on our social medias. You can if you're not doing it, what are you doing? Come on. It's so easy. So make sure you go I follow. Do follow it. So yeah. Thank yeah. you, Chris. We you just click a button. Yeah. 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 We appreciate Chris. Thank you for the support. So obviously you can go follow us on, you know, all all streaming platforms where, you know, you can find podcasts, whether that be Spotify, Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, and more. We're also available on YouTube with the video stream of this show. And then you can find all the links to that on our Instagram at down dot to the wire again at down dot to the wire. Thank you guys again for listening. And from down the wire, I'm Brian Costa. I'm Tyler Stringfellow. And I'm Chris String. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Have a great night. Great weekend. And peace out.